be yourself. <laughs> That's it. Be you. Be you. There's no gimmick. There's no... You don't have to contrive anything. Who are you? Where are you today? What is your story? Where does that come from? The most important thing is you must put everybody on notice that you're here and you're for real. I'm not a player that's just going to come and go. I'm not a player that's going to make an all-star team one time, two times. I'm here to be an all-time great. No, it's it's funny. Like, it's to me, the mentality is a really simple one in, in the sense that the confidence comes from preparation. You know, so when the game's on the line, I'm not asking myself to do something that I haven't done thousands of times before, right? So when I prepare, I know what I'm capable of doing, I know what I'm comfortable doing, and I know what I'm not comfortable doing, you know, right? And so in those moments, if it looks like I'm ice cold or not nervous, it's because I've done it thousands of times before. So what's one more time? Uh, Michael's a great basketball player, but I'm Kobe Bryant. The most important thing, uh, I think, for players that come after me is to understand that things, these things are possible, you know, like you don't want to ever limit your imagination or limit what's possible because people may think you're crazy, right? But if us as athletes don't think that it's possible to do these things, how in the world can we inspire people? Have you ever questioned your ability? No, not from a physical standpoint. From a physical standpoint, I felt like I could always do what I wanted to do. Mentally, I've, I've questioned it in terms of how, how am I going to get these guys on the same page? How am I going to lead these guys and make sure we get to that next level? That, that's always been the thing that I've questioned with myself is can I, can I motivate these guys and you know, carry them to winning the championship? When we say this cannot be accomplished, this cannot be done, then we are shortchanging ourselves. I remember what Babe Ruth said, he, he swings big and he misses big. Same thing with me. I have no fear whatsoever. Uh, Max, I think the greatest fear that we face is ourselves, actually. You know, I think it's, uh, it's not anything that's external or anything that's superficial. I think the greatest fear you face is yourself because, you know, we all have dreams and it's very scary sometimes to accept the dream that you have. And it's scarier still to say, okay, I want that. Mm -hmm. It's scary because you're afraid that if you put your heart and soul into it, and you fail, then how are you gonna feel about yourself, right? So being fearless means putting yourself out there and going for it, no matter what, go for it. Not for anybody else, um, but for yourself. But there's an element of doubt as far as my game goes and being old age or something like that, I don't think that holds any value. You know, the fact that I was playing my best basketball before I got hurt. The injury is the thing, right? So. We just have to see who's right. You're going to show up to play, and you're going to lollygag through this scrimmage, through this drill. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to let you know I beat you. And I'm going to want you to reconsider your professional life choice. <laughs> you know, and, and I had to separate myself. Because going through that, that time, I felt like there's so many things coming at once. It was just becoming very, very confusing. I had to organize things. So I created the Black Mamba. So Kobe has to deal with these issues, the, um, all the personal challenges. The Black Mamba steps on the court and does what he does. Fuck everyone. I'm destroying everybody that step on the court. Some people sit there and say, y'all keep talking about Kobe being the greatest player in the game today. Y'all don't realize that Kobe trying to be arguably the greatest ever. Your response. I got to get a couple more rings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you going to? Yeah, you know what? I'm, I won't rest until we do. Cal Bell has never blocked my jump shot. And, uh, you know, especially in the game seven. Oh, that doesn't matter. When we pass the torch, and Larry Bird and I pass it to, to Michael. Now, here you are the best player on the planet. When will you think it's time to pass it on to LeBron? <laughs> when I retire. <laughs> <laughs> torch, torches never get passed. You got you to gotta, you gotta earn that. Has anybody earned it right now on this team? I mean, when you look out there and you no. see this young core. No, 
Well, well not for the face of the NBA, but to, to lead this team. Who, who's got who's got that killer instinct that it needs to lead the Lakers? No, because you know that, that that's not a. If you have to ask that question, and the question the answer is already there. Those are things you don't have to ask. You know, those things just happen. It's a great feeling to know that you set a goal for yourself. And you were able to reach that goal and to not get that. Yeah, I mean, Durant asked me to show, show him something the last game. I had 14 points in like four minutes. I, mean, I can, you know, scoring is what I do. I just score in my sleep. You scored 81 points, which is second only to Wilt Chamberlain's 100 points. No one has really come close to your total since. Uh, people have been in the 60s, including you. Um, you went 28 of 46 shooting, 18, to 20, 18 of 20 free throws. Um, you scored 55 in the second half and 28 of your team's final 31 points. There, there's the scorebook above us that shows the, the scorebook. And the answer to the trivia question, who was the second leading scorer of that game is? I have no Smush idea. Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so good. So we had four. He had, yeah, he had thirteen. Now uh, you know why I had to score eighty-one. <laughs> yeah. Look at the big picture. Look at the big picture. In two thousand and eight, um, when we lost to the Celtics, that was a very, very long night for me. I mean, I was really upset, angry, frustrated, sad. But I looked at the big picture. I said, I'm going to win a championship. Again, I'm going to do it. It didn't happen this year. I hope it happened next year. It might not happen next year. But one of these is going to happen. <laughs> so you play the big picture and not get caught up in the frustrations of one moment. You try to take that moment, learn from that moment, and keep moving forward. The reason why I love that series so much is that we went down three games to two against Boston. And now you got two games coming home. I remember sitting in the locker room and they beat the crap out of us too that game. So we're sitting in the <laughs> locker room and it's really, really quiet. And I'm sitting there looking around and we just lost the Celtics in 08. So this is like revenge, right? And they're kicking our butt again, right? So I sit around and I just started laughing. I started laughing and then I remember uh, Derek Fisher looked at me like, and Lamar looked at me and goes, what, what is funny? I said, dude, they beat the crap out of us. <laughs> they just beat the crap out. I said, I'm, I'm missing the part where that's funny. I said, man, listen, if we start this season and they say, you know, all you have to do is win two games at home and you're NBA champ, would you take that? Yeah. And like, right. Yeah, that's, right. That's all we got to do. Yeah. Go Down home, three, two. win two, we're NBA champions. All we got to do is win two, ga two games in a row. That's it. We'll take care of the first game, and I promise you, they're not winning game seven on our home floor. It's wow. not happening. And so we all just laughed about it. And then we went out and we figured it out. But that game seven was, we're down 15 points in the fourth quarter, right? And that's when you have to collectively look at each other and say, you know, the spirit of your team must be good. Because at that moment is when teams fracture. If the energy amongst each other isn't there, that trust isn't there, you're done. Mm. And we were able to collectively dig deep together and say, all right, we're going to figure this thing out. Wow. And I wasn't playing well. I wasn't shooting the ball well at all. Um, and so my teammates picked you up and they delivered. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, they started from scratch. And I'm very, I'm very proud and very happy to be a part of this Laker team that's, you know, here to start a new generation and Shaq to be the main piece of the puzzle. And I'm very excited to go out there and hopefully contribute in whatever way I can. I do view myself as being one of the best who've ever laced them up. Um, but in terms of ranking them, I can't possibly imagine because I, everything that I do, I've learned from the guys who come before me. You remember when your, your Jersey retirement, and I'm walking out, and we were in a playoff race in the hunt, and was going south. And we were walking out, and I gave you depth, said, man, I love you, you know, congratulations, everything, and I was just, you know, um, happy for you, you know. But I couldn't help but say, you know, this night is made a lot sweeter because I know you have four and I have five. <laughs> <laughs> We know what it means as a team, but what about individually for you? Just got one more to Shaq. <laughs> so you can take that to the bank. I don't know this guy. I might have said one word to this guy. I don't know this kid. And I think he, uh, he overreacts to stuff. I mean, I don't know him. I don't think about him. When we go out there, we play. When we play during the season, we play each other. That's it. I don't know this kid. I don't need to know this kid. I don't need to. And we go out there and we play the game and leave it at that. Maybe he wasn't hugged enough as a kid. <laughs>
That kid, that kid is two years older than Kobe, by the way. I love that. I love who, who beat you in one-on-one -on -one if it ever happened in practice? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not trying to beat you, but you know, that's what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if there's going to be a player that beat me, retired, you know, um, on that last shot in Utah that did. That's about it. The story goes with that, that players were just lining up, putting chairs out, bringing the popcorn, just ready for bad. those one ones. It was, it was bad. It was bad. Can you he, kind of he tell tried us? Me. He tried me. It didn't work out too well for him. It was bad. I mean, I, I, there, was, there was one kid. Um, I, it's petty, I know, but whatever. His name is Victor. And I, I remember Victor. His name. his name is Victor. Little bastard. Whatever. And he, he, was, he was giving me a hard time about being this foreign kid and your dad's an NBA player and you think you're good, but I'm blah, 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 blah. All right. <laughs> so we, we, played, we played a one-on-one -on -one game and it was like, I swear it was like a, I don't know, it was like one of those like movie scenes where like we're like in a knife fight or something. It's like everybody standing around watching. Everybody standing around watching. I just devoured the poor kid and kind of, you know, I'm enjoying rubbing it in a little yeah. bit right now. So Victor was not the victor. Yeah, Victor had a tough day. Uh, it doesn't matter who I'm playing, play you bust your ass. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Hey, of course, I mean, Mike's really going to tell me when to go in and out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I had picked up my dribble, and he was squeezing me and pressuring me. Now, at that moment, it just became about finding some gap where I could elevate and get a good look at the rim. And if I get a good look at the rim, then it's just a matter of me knocking the shot down because I know he's not going to jump the contestant. Staying outside the arc, dribbling. Patterson keeps his feet. Kobe forces. Oh! He made it! He threw it in! What a yeah, shot! Unbelievable shot. One second remaining in double overtime. The Blazers lead it 104 102. That was yeah, vastly more complex. Um, you know, because of the time that was on the clock. One second remaining in the regular season, possibly. Out to Kobe. What a way to finish! Are you kidding me? Theo Ratliff came out of nowhere. <laughs> came out of nowhere. And he was so close to block. I mean, he was like, I mean, a fingernail away. You know, I mean, it was that close. And when I released the ball, he actually jammed my finger. But yeah, I think he helped the shot, though. Because in that shot and falling away, I probably would have shot it flat. But when he came to contest it, I had to get it over him. And I had to get it over him. I had to put more arc on the ball. You know, the time out, I, you know, I told my teammates, I said, give me a good pick, and we're going home with a W. Vince Carter had something to say. Vince Carter, of all people, had something to say about your 81 points performance. Let me read this quote to you. The only bad thing about it is that younger kids whose minds are easily warped are going to think, oh, I'm going to go out there and do it instead of the team concept first. Vince Carter said this about your 81-point performance. When you hear a comment like that, especially coming from a guy who's known for you know, dropping 50 and dunking on people, but not exactly the most fundamentally sound ball player in the world. What thoughts come to your mind? Well, I, I just really let it go in one ear and go out the other. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if, um, you know, people who were watching the game, you know, knew what that game was about. Mm -hmm. They knew what I had to do to kind of get us back in the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, it's about winning the game. Mm -hmm. And we won. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else to be said. Now, now, here's the part that some people might not know about you, but I think I know. See how I ask you the question, your eyes get narrow. And what that says to me is, I remember Vince said that when I see him next time. <laughs> That's what that said. That's what that says to me. Am I lying? You know, uh, I just try to use everything I can for motivation and as mm. a tool, you know, for, for me to be able to elevate my team to play the best basketball. So uh, I try to use a bit of everything. When do you look at the score and say, all right, this is time for me to be offensively aggressive? You know, it, it depends who we're playing. And what I mean by that is there are certain teams that you can demoralize by scoring a lot of points. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if I come out against a certain team that I know are geared to, to stop me, if I go out there and I score 20, 25 points a quarter, it takes their momentum away. Phoenix is not one of those teams. 
Yeah, I've scored 20 points against them in the quarter, 25 points. It doesn't do anything to them. They just come back down to the end and keep free flowing and shooting the ball. To demoralize them, you have to stop them. Did you take some of that personally? I mean, not, not just you, but the guys on the team have sort of, you know, when people say that about your team? I, honestly, I haven't even heard it. I haven't you know what even a bunch of idiots anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just talk about staying in that zone and how you were able to maintain yeah. that. It's hard, man. You know, there's times where you come out of it, and um, even myself, when I'd come out of it, I'd, I'd be aware of bringing myself right back, right? Because sometimes you have those emo emotional outbursts, right? But then you got to find that center again because th the next play is imminent. You're here, right? So the most important thing is really staying in the moment and staying present. I mean, that's all the zone is. You know, whether it's offensive being in the zone or defensive being in the zone, what that really means is that you're simply here in the present, and the only thing that matters is what's right in front of you. And the trick is how do you do that? Do you remember what you told me one day in the forum when I first met you? You said you were going to be the finish it for me. What, the greatest player of all time? Yes. You remember you told me that? No, but that sounds, that sounds something, no, that sounds like it. something that I would say. <laughs> you, you, actually, you actually said that, and then you actually said, I'm going to be the Will Smith of the NBA. This was oh, your really? Year, and I was like, all right. <laughs> okay, Will, Will Smith. Whatever you say. Yeah, times have changed. <laughs> uh, yeah, now, you know, I've always had ambition. I want to ask you, sometimes when you're out there, do you feel like Superman? Do you feel like there's a cape on and you can do anything? <laughs> When you're in the zone, yeah, so, yeah, you feel that way sometimes. But for the most part, you know, I, I think the best way to describe it is like, uh, you know, you, you're a conductor. You're conducting things that, that are going on. It's like you're, you're, you're orchestrating the symphony. We have never seen anything like this. This will probably never, ever happen again. You need to go back in there, and uh, you might be able to get 80 points. And he said, yeah, we're up 30 tonight, though. I'll, I'll do it another time. And I, I, remember, I just looked at him and said, you know, when the time is right, you know, there'll be a time this season where I'll do it. <laughs> and I went and I sat down. He just looked at me and he said, man, you're crazy. And that was that. All the way up into the warm-up line, I felt awful. You know, my knees had been bothering me. I felt stiff. All of a sudden, the game starts, and I just get in one of those zones. So the reverse way up the score. I didn't feel like the basket was this big, but it was a different kind of a zone. It was like a relentless type of a zone. Here's Kobe, trying to move around Mo Pete, trying to put him up, finally shoots, caught it in the foul! You, you talked about him being in one of those zones, yeah. he's definitely in it right now. At halftime, I just said, I'm going to come out here in the third quarter, and I'm going to go after him, and I'm not going to stop. And uh, that's exactly what I did. Go ahead, guys, get on my back, we'll see what we can do. Now to Kobe. He pulls up for a three, yes! Kobe's got 44. It was kind of like that attitude, you just refuse to lose. You know, by any means necessary. Knocked away by Kobe. Great hustle by Kobe. He's going to score. And dunk Lakers lead. <laughs> I felt like I was having a special night when Lamar kept reminding me that I was having a special night in every time out. <laughs> he'd, he'd come to me and say, you can't get 50. And the next time I go, he just looks at me and goes, you can't get 60. <laughs> Kobe goes straight to the dribble. In the right away. And then by the last time he says, we're going to get 80 then. <laughs> For three again, yes! <laughs> well, there's 70. That wasn't something that was out of the realm of possibility in my mind uh, because of the amount of work that I put in. I mean, that summer I really, I put a lot of time in the gym. I put a lot of time on the track. And I could run all day and run at a high speed all day long. And I'd taken so many shots. I mean, I, my shot felt sharp. Kobe's got the Laker record. <laughs> 72. So it's like if I, my foot stays on the gas, there could be games where I do have 80 points. I think it probably sank, sank in for me after the game. And Bishaw just came up to me and looked at me and said, man, you are crazy. He <laughs> said, so you told me when the time comes, you'll be able to do it. And I thought you lost your mind. And, man, I can't say that you're that crazy anymore. <laughs>